Okay, so uh, I'm not going to do the question from the quiz, but I'm going to do one similar to it to kind of show you. This is kind of a parallel question to question four. So if I have root x minus 2 is equal to x minus 4, and I want to solve, um, first thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to square both sides. Okay, so I square both sides. When I square the left side, it's just basically going to get rid of the radical. Okay. And on this side, it's like having x minus 4 times x minus 4. So you have to FOIL, okay? Now when I FOIL, I get x squared minus 4x minus 4x plus 16. Now I can see here I've got a quadratic. So um, I can't just simply solve for x by moving all the x to one side and everything else to the other. What I have to do is move everything over to one side and factor. So I'm going to have x squared. I have negative 4x and negative 4x, which is negative 8x, plus 16. And when I move these two over, I get negative x plus 2, because it's always the opposite. So let's just combine our like terms. So I have negative 9x um, plus 18. Now um, I've got a factor. So to find the roots, to find the roots, um, <coughs> the foots, I don't know what I'm writing. Uh, so different things are happening in my brain. So to find the roots factor, okay? So when I factor this, two numbers that multiply to give me positive 18 and add up to negative 9, so it's going to be x minus 6 x minus 3. Okay, so my roots are, uh, can you close that door, Gibson? Are 6 and 3. So those are my possible values. Now I need to check both of them to see if they are, if either one of them is an extraneous root. So I do that by verifying both sides. So I go back to the original equation and um, I'm going to do a left side, right side verification, okay? So the original equation, uh, on the one side I had root, let's scroll back and see what it was, root x minus two, and on the other side I had x minus four. So I'm gonna test both of these answers, both of these roots to see which one works. So I had root x minus 2 and um, x minus 4. So this is my left side and my right side, left side and right side. So here I'll test x equals 6, and here I'll test x equals 3. Sometimes they both work. Sometimes only one works. Sometimes none works. Okay, so we substitute in. So here I'm going to substitute in anywhere I see a x, I'll write a 6. So 6 minus 4. So I'm going to get 6 minus 2 is 4. 6 minus 4 is 2. Square root of 4 is 2. So yay, this one works. So this is an appropriate root. Let's try the other side. So we're testing x equals 3. So I get 3 minus 2. And here I get 3 minus 4. So 3 minus 2 is 1. Square root of 1. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. Square root of 1 is 1. So this doesn't work. So from this, my extraneous root is 3. Okay. Now you ask, could you have a negative number as an extraneous root? Yes, because if I, if I look here, if I had gotten a negative 1, negative 1, um, oh, no, actually, for this, it, it, I couldn't have gotten a negative number. Uh, it really depends on what's under the radical. So if my under my radical had happened to be um, uh, x plus 7, I could, have, I could have a negative 6 there for my value for x because it would still give me a positive value under the radical. So, yes, you can depends on what's totally under the radical as to whether or not you can have a negative number. I hope this helps. I'll send this off to you and hopefully that will help you. Um, it's not the same question as number four.